Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at Tales of Exilia 2 for the PlayStation 3. The game was developed and published by Bandai Namco, and was released in 2012. The game is a direct sequel to the first game, and takes place roughly about a year or so after the ending of Exilia 1. So with Tales of Exilia 2, is this game a JRPG masterpiece, or is it something like a steaming pile of Final Fantasy X2? Here's the details in the review. It's been roughly just over a year since the events of Tales of Exilia 1 came to a close. Now Reza Maxia and Olympias are working together to try and solve the crisis that we were left with at the ending of the very first game. We start the game off however not with Jude or Mila, but instead one of the new protagonists, Luger Kresnik. The game's story will mainly focus on Luger and Elle, as it's their fates which will eventually determine the outcome of both worlds. I don't want to say too much about this, because I want you to experience this game for yourself, because you really should brace yourself for one hell of an emotional roller coaster ride, as there are some parts in this game which, depending on your actions, will leave you an emotional gibbering mess. Everyone from the first game returns here in the sequel, so we're back again with Jude, Mila, and the rest of the gang, and now adding into that mix, we now have King Gaius and Muse join the group as well. However, in Tales of Gazillia 2, the main focus isn't on Mila or Jude, but instead our new protagonists Luga, El, and Rollo. It's these three that the game is based around, and with the returning Jude, Mila, and everyone else, they plan to uncover the truths behind the Divergence Catalyst, and the trials which have been set upon the world. The gameplay in Tales of Exilia 2 is essentially the exact same as what it was in the first. And that's a good thing, because everything worked perfectly fine in the first game, and as a result, it works here too. Combat for the most part is the same, leveling up your skills is pretty much the same as what it was in the first, leveling up your characters and abilities is also the same. The only real huge difference in this game from the previous one is that this game has something called a debt system. And I think that this went down like a stone, because I've never seen it used again in any Tales game, or in fact any other JRPG since. The debt system worked via you starting off the game, and then you ended up getting a loan, which you have to pay off because of your medical bills, that ended up being used on you, your daughter, and Rollo. However, this loan you got which you then used to pay your medical bills, was something stupid like half a million gold. Now, as a result of this, what this means is that during the game, you are going to get pestered a lot, and I do mean a lot. You'll be trying to gain some money to buy new weapons, armour, or anything else, but then suddenly Nova will send you a message saying that you have to pay some of the loan back. You can ignore her to a point, but then she starts harassing you every few minutes, until eventually you do have to pay the loan off. This happens throughout the entire of the game, meaning that right up until the very end, you're almost always out of pocket, and it just gets very annoying and very frustrating very quickly. I do see why it was done, and why it was added to the game, and I can possibly understand the developers sitting around the table at that time, thinking that this was a good and new idea to be added into the series. However, when you put something from theory into practice, it's a different matter entirely. And if anything, I feel that the debt system really does bring the game down quite a bit, because instead of Nova coming across as a likeable character, who feels like she's part of the group, she just comes across as constantly harassing you for money all the time. Graphics-wise, everything is the same as it was with Tales of Exilia 1. I praise the graphics of the first game, and I feel the same about them here too. They look good, 
they're really well done, and they're really well created and executed. However, just like with the first game, this one also has bad pop-ins as well. Only even more so this time, because the developers tried to be a bit more adventurous. You'll be going to one location and then everything seems fine enough, but then you'll go into a brand new area which will be a busy marketplace with something like 30 to 40 people, and even though I had this game installed on my hard drive, the environments would load first and then the people would magically appear in front of me like phantoms about 5 or 8 seconds afterwards. In the first game, we mainly focused on Riza Maxia. In this game, we're mainly focusing on the Olympus side of things. However, with this game being set a year after the ending of the first one, the schism is now gone and both worlds connect to each other. We start the game off in Olympios, as that's where Liga is from, but then very quickly we're going to be going back and forth to Riza Maxia, to Olympus, and back and forth, and back and forth. What this means, in short, is that there's going to be a lot of reused assets from the first game, with its locations, and that's not exactly a bad thing like how it may sound at first, because the whole point of this game and its environments is that they're meant to be showing you just how quickly things have changed within the space of a year. So whilst you do get a lot of new locations to travel in and explore, you're also going to be revisiting a lot of past locations as well. Tales of Exilia 2 is a sequel that is done right. It doesn't take any stupid risks, it doesn't put someone unqualified in charge of the production of the game, it doesn't change characters to almost unrecognisable levels of weirdness, and it doesn't mess with a battle system, which works. Tales of Exilia 2 took everything that made the first game a great, fun and enjoyable experience, and it simply just continues on from that. And that's exactly how a sequel should be. If you are wanting the very best games for your PlayStation 3 library, then you have to add in Tales of Exilia 1 and 2 to that list because these games really are two of some of the very best JRPGs for that system. The game isn't perfect, and just like the first, it does have some flaws, but even so, Tales of Exilia 1 and 2 really meant something to me. And the characters, the world building, and everything else about these games just drew me in, and it made me care about them. And if a game does have the ability to do that and find a place in your heart, then it definitely deserves a place in your collection as well. Well, that's it for this for you guys. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.